Hey everybody, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is D-Lo and I've got another video for you today. I'm coming to you guys from my bunker where I am quarantined, uh, not due to sickness, but just uh, so that no one else will get sick as most of the rest of the world is doing. So um, I wanted to bring you guys um, a couple of interesting articles I found that kind of tie into that. I know everyone's kind of speculating and people like myself who typically would be going to work every single day are told to either quote work from home or, you know, there's not much to do. So you just, uh, you know, what do you do? You can spiritize or, uh, how do, uh, you theorize about what might be happening. So I want to try to not go insane. So I'm going to talk to you guys about some very interesting, um, possible coincidences, but then also what the heck is going on with the new warriors There's a really interesting, um, video that I'll, I'll run past you guys. Hopefully my audio is okay on that. Bear with me and let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, Spider-Man PS4 predicted coronavirus. What the heck? And uh, Marvel's New Warriors. I'll play a video on that um, and pause it and talk about it, comment about it. Um, it's, it's quite ridiculous. And I want to know your thoughts as well. Also, the bonus topic is Bob Iger stepped down along with over 200 CEOs, um, you know, just from January till now ridiculous um mass exodus of company leaders and uh, i won't go over all of them but i'll give you guys a few of them very very odd and it kind of ties into the movie industry too so all right let's not waste any more time i wanted to talk with you guys um about this if you guys haven't already played spider-man on ps4 it's one of the best games you could probably play on the ps4 no no doubt it's one of the best um smooth gameplay beautiful graphics um wonderful storyline um if you if you were to play through and watch it, it from the perspective of a spider-man story it's probably the best spider-man story ever told um it's amazing no pun intended it's quite literally amazing um so that being said i haven't played it since it came out and i beat it i beat it quite fast i beat it twice even and for some reason, when all this is going down with the coronavirus and all that stuff, I wasn't thinking about the game, but I saw this article and it, it made me think, oh my gosh, and I can't wait to show this to you guys. So I'll go ahead and cut over to this one right here. Um, let me see. I'm going to bring uh, an, an adjustment here. Okay, there we go. So I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and read this, guys. Very fascinating. It says, Marvel Spider-Man PS4 fans see eerie detail in new light after coronavirus. So let's go ahead and jump into this article. Marvel Spider-Man fans on PS4 are seeing one of the game's eerie details in new light after coronavirus. As you may know, the PS4 exclusive takes place in New York City man or Manhattan to be more specific. And unfortunately... For New Yorkers, New York City has been hit harder by the coronavirus than any other American city so far. As you would expect, this realization isn't lost on play players playing the 2018 game. Spoilers for Spider-Man PS4 ahead. If you haven't played it, this is going to spoil it for you a little bit, but, you know, you had your chance. <laughs> so, here we go. Um, towards the end of Marvel Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus unleashes a deadly virus on New York City dubbed Devil's Breath, a.k.a. <coughs> Devil's Breath, which causes the city to go on... And by the way, that wasn't a real cough. I'm not sick. Um, cause the city to go on lockdown and also... Uh, and allows the Sinister Six to terrorize Manhattan. At this point in the game, there's some updates made to the city one of these updates is the addition of a new york city municipal or municipal authority health warning that cautions residents to stay inside and avoid contact with others does that sound familiar to you guys i mean it's quite literally what we're experiencing right now with the social distancing all of the social distancing mandates and in some places there's talk right now of quarantine that is not um that is not uh a uh, uh, nationwide mandate it's not even i think regionally mandated only for those who have uh been confirmed with the virus are told to quarantine themselves for their for their sake for their family's sake for their friend's sake colleagues co-workers and strangers they may come in contact with um or inadvertently come in contact with something that comes in contact with them so just to stop the spread um but doesn't that sound kind of ridiculous 2018 this is when this came out um 
and it's a, and it's talking about the devil's breath. If you guys played the game, you know that, um, it, and I think they're going to get to this. It's airborne, but um, uh, through coughs and sneezes and stuff like that. And it says, which causes the city to go on lockdown uh, and allows the Sinister Six to terrorize Manhattan. At this point in the game, there's some updates made to the city. One of these updates is the addition of New York City Municipal, Municipal Authority Health Warning that cautions residents to stay inside and avoid contact with others. This is in the game, by the way. This is stuff that happens in the storyline of the video game. This is it. Um, a year before the coronavirus outbreak in 2019. Uh, November 2019, and then now we in the United States experience that. Um, so kind of, it's two years later, I guess. It's a year and a half, kind of, because it overlaps the end of the year. Um, but it says this. Because not only is the virus highly contagious in the game, but symptoms may not be evident. This is one of the frustrating points for most people in the public right now is that the coronavirus, um, you know, like if you call into the to the doctor and you say, hey, you know, I've got, you know, I've got a cough or a, a fever. And they basically just tell you, um, you know, are basically, do you feel like you can't breathe? And if you say, no, I can breathe, then they're just like, OK, stay home. What if I couldn't breathe? Sometimes if they say we have enough, you know, they'll bring you in. That's the, that's the goal. If you're basically dying of this thing, they bring you in. But if you're not all the other symptoms that are listed online, um, that you were supposed to check the box and say, Oh, I have this, I have this, I have this, I might have Corona. If it's, if it's not the respiratory failure and like you feel like you're drowning with no water, you know, you're just drowning in the air. Then, um, sometimes they don't even test you cause they're limited, limited tests. And so, um, that's that's kind of one of the frustrating things is that a lot of celebrities have been tested when they didn't have um, any symptoms. They were asymptomatic and they got tested. For instance, um, I just and this is not me like throwing shade, but this is just an example. Um, so like I, for instance, was suffering from allergies when this whole thing broke out. I have seasonal allergies every single year. And um, and this is uh, for a lot of people that have allergies. It was frustrating because a lot of the symptoms that were listed were similar, like the, the, uh, sign, you know, the sinus nasal drip, um, you know, sneezing, not necessarily coughing, but just, you know, allergy symptoms. Um, if you called in because they said to check, they said to just err on the side of caution. Um, you were told that it's possible, but they would, they can't know cause they can't test you. Cause unless you were under 50, 55 for, in my situation, they told me, um, we can't test you for Corona. But we are almost entirely certain you don't have it, which was nice to hear. That was really good. They, but they said, stay home. I was like, what if you have it? They said, just stay home. So it's like, if you do have it, stay home. If you don't have it, stay home. And then we're not going to test you unless you're over 50 years old and you have respiratory issues or respiratory failure. Um, that is basically the criteria for like, if you want to test, you got to have that. And, um, and then like a couple days later, we see that Idris Elba got tested positive for coronavirus, even though he didn't have any symptoms. He didn't, how was he supposed to know he was sick, you know? And that was just like, wait a minute, why is he getting that? And no one else is it's cause he's famous of course. And so, you know, glad to hear he's okay. But, um, but that was just one of the things. And that's in the game. The reason why I'm going on this whole tangent is because in the Spider-Man game, they addressed that in 2018. And so it says here, because not only is the virus highly contagious, but the symptoms may not be evident. So even if you don't have any symptoms, you don't feel sick, you don't look sick, you're not tired, you're not coughing, nothing. Um, you might still have it. And the game predicted this. And then it said, that said, if you're experiencing any flu-like symptoms, you're supposed to contact the quarantine hotline immediately. Does that sound familiar? It absolutely flipping does. Um, it's the same scenario. And then it says, well, thanks to the coronavirus, it's not far from the current reality of New York City. In addition to the warnings, like the one below, J. Jonah Jameson, his in-game tirades about the coronavirus sound similar to the type of speech you can find about the coronavirus on network news and certain parts of the internet. I've seen many of these posts myself on social media, people posting, stay, I've seen the opposite where it says, stay home, stay safe. This one says, stay safe, stay home. Um, but it's really interesting that the exact same verbiage is is what is being used in real life 
after this this game predicted the exact same scenario in the exact same city with the exact same type of flu-like symptom disease called the devil's breath um and then it says as you may know uh spider-man on ps4 isn't the only game now being seen in new light as a result of coronavirus the division in particular is a bit eerie to play meanwhile others are wondering if Hideo Kojima once again predicted the future with Death Strand, uh, Stranding. Marvel Spider-Man is available on the PS4 and the PS4 only. For more news, media, rumors, and leaks on the game, be sure to take a second and peruse and blah, 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 blah. And so then it just continues to go on about that. But basically, very, very strange how they they predicted this way in advance. And so like people like me who got all this time on our hands now. I mean, I'm, I've got a family, so I'm obviously busy taking care of my family and my wife and, um, you know, our newborn baby, that sort of thing. My wife's been a champ with that, but the, um, uh, this whole, you know, coronavirus situation, self-isolating, um, and even at times like internet failures that have happened, um, it really starts to get, get you into this like conspiratorial mood and that's kind of my default is i get like questioning i'm like why is this this way or why who you know who's responsible for this or what the you know so that's kind of like my thoughts anyway i want you guys to jump into the comments and let me know what you guys have to say about this let me take some of these comments in the youtube live comment section right now um so it says daniel's hot topics dude what's up hey before i read yours i just want to let you know i'm sorry i didn't get on on sunday I was planning um, to get back on there, but I got really busy with my family, um, just, you know, newborn baby. And it just, it got kind of um, all hands on deck, you know what I mean? And so I wasn't able to jump on and do a live stream like I had anticipated for you for your birthday. Happy belated birthday, brother. Um, sorry, you got to be quarantined during this whole thing, but, you know, I really appreciate you tuning into all of my videos. You've been such an awesome, awesome uh, person to join in and, and talk with. You always bring great questions and whatnot. Um, so you say here, hey, Daniel, what's up? No, I have not played Spider-Man on PS4. I heard it was good, though. Dude, it's flipping amazing. If you get a chance to play it, you absolutely should. If you've played the Dark Knight, I'm sorry, uh, Arkham Knight um, or the Arkham Knight series, um, it's almost exactly like that. You just take that and you make it the daytime. And instead of like dark, creepy vibes, it's it's got a balance. It's, you know, a lot of fun quippiness because it's Spider-Man. But it's the same gameplay style. Like it's it's that like where you can attack, you can learn, get new moves, new items, new weapons, and then you just you can counter and dodge and parry and all that stuff. But it works really well because a lot of people pointed out in the Arkham series, which is a best selling game series, that um, Batman his his head would kind of like flash, like he was noticing a punch coming whenever someone was about to hit you, and you have to be quick and push the counter button or the dodge button or whatever. Um, that kind of functions like a spider sense in the Batman game. So in the Spider-Man game, it's completely relevant. It's completely perfect and, and makes total sense. The web swinging is almost therapeutic. It's so fun. Um, and it kind of like, if you have vibration on, on your, on your controller, like it, it vibrates with the G force of the swing. It's kind of like, it's really fun, fun little like trick for the viewer and the player, but it's, it's fun. It's, it's all kinds of fun, man. You should totally get it. Best storyline for Spider-Man. I've experienced probably ever. It's amazing. And it says, I don't think I will get a PS4 because for me, at least the good old days of gaming are over. I miss the GameCube days of the early 2000s and I miss Luigi's Mansion, Metroid Prime, Batman Vengeance. Heck yeah, dude. Bat okay, so GameCube is unequivocally, in my opinion, the best game console of all time. It was designed for couch play. It was designed so that you and your siblings, or in this case, now that we're all grownups, us and our wives or us and our kids or us and whoever, anyone that's in the room with you, which is the best gaming experience, can have fun together. Mario Party, Mario Kart Double Dash, Super Smash Brothers Melee, you know, uh, and then again, wonderful single player games as well, like Metroid Prime. And then there was a Star Fox game where the story mode was single player, but it had a really fun multiplayer as well. Uh, Star Fox Adventure, I think it was. Tons of awesome games for the GameCube. Best console of all time. And it like, it never, like, I mean, some people, I knew a couple people who broke theirs, but it was like they dropped it a few times. 
I had dropped mine a couple of times, but the, the machine never stopped working perfectly. Like it was awesome. Best console of all time. Um, and then he uh, goes on to say, Daniel's Hot Topic says, Scooby-Doo Night of 101 Frights, Scooby-Doo Mystery, uh, Mayhem, Star Fox Adventure, Star Fox Assault, Sam Raimi, Spider-Man, the game one, two, and three. Absolutely. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man games, um, I believe I had those on the PlayStation 2, if I'm not mistaken, but those were so legit. In the first Spider-Man, you could unlock uh, playing as as Green Goblin. It's not like an open world map in Spider in the first Spider-Man game, but you could play a couple of missions as the Green Goblin on his glider. It was so much fun. I love that. I love those games. You're absolutely right. I couldn't agree with you more on those. So, um, but I would say, if you can find a PlayStation Four for cheap, you should totally get one. If for no other reason, just for Spider-Man on PS4, it is so much flipping fun. Um, and then he says, also PS2 was great as well. Dragon Ball Budokai. Yep, Budokai One, Two, and Three was epic. Grand Theft Auto Two, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Yeah, I never got into the Grand Theft Auto games, but I did play the Dragon Ball ones. And um, those were great games. You know what else was fun on PlayStation 2 while we're on this on this topic? Was um I think it was called uh it was like it was called like Star Wars. Um it was basically the Clone Wars, like you were playing in the Clone Wars, but you were in these tanks. And I can't remember if it was called Conquest or like Assault or something, but it was the funnest game. Me and my brother played that for probably a year straight. It was amazing. And then obviously more games are coming out. Um, gosh, I love that. I love that console. But I don't. I, I'm with you, man. I think the days for me of video game play are not not entirely over. But like, I'm not a. I don't consider myself a gamer anymore. Like, I played um, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance three on the Switch. I bought the Switch for that game. Um, because there was no way I was not going to have that game. And Super Smash Bros. That's also a good one. But uh, for me, the the days of like I'm, I'm a gamer, I'm gaming all the time. It's not a thing really. Unless there's a very specific thing I'm trying to play. Um, and usually it's a story mode thing. Because you know I used to play with the homies on the couch. And everyone wants to play online. It's just not the same. It doesn't feel good. Um, unless it's like World of Warcraft. I could play that online. But I don't. Because I have a family. And I don't have the time. All right. Anyways, next topic. So you guys tell me what you guys um, loved about this game. Are you guys like, holy cow, um, I didn't put that together. I didn't think about the virus, de devil's breath, coronavirus, that sort of thing. Um, the, co the correlations there. What's your favorite game console while we're on that topic? And let's move on to the next subject for today. The next subject for today is Marvel's New Warriors. And I have to say... I am extremely, extremely disappointed 